Sent the flooding here on the first floor. The enemy's breaking out. We've got a riot on there. Quick, get the security doors. Everyone out, evacuate. What the hell is going on here? We just was left there to die. Hello. Welcome to Strange Places, where we go places that most people wouldn't dare reach. And I am your host, Max Power. So what may you ask, am I doing? Wearing a prison guard outfit with a giant set of handcuffs in the middle of this abandoned hospital? Well, I'm here to tell you that this is not an abandoned hospital. This is a massive abandoned prison tower. Welcome to the now partially abandoned Orleans Parish Prison. Today we will be exploring the prison's house of detention, or the house of death as the inmates called it. The conditions at the HOD were so bad that it was forced to close in 2012. OPP was once known as the most dangerous prison in America, and at one time prisoners were able to sneak drugs and even fully loaded handguns into the supposedly secure cell blocks. But its worst days came in August of 2005, when Hurricane Katrina battered the region. While the rest of the city was under a mandatory evacuation, the inmates at OPP were to remain. The results were catastrophic. When the hurricane made landfall on the morning of August 29th, it brought with it heavy rains, damaging winds, and intense storm surges. The lower levels of the prison began to flood, forcing the guards to transfer the prisoners to higher levels where as many as eight prisoners were forced into these tiny two-person cells. As the storm continued to wreak havoc on the city and its electric grid, the prison finally lost power. The emergency backup generators temporarily restored electricity until those shut down as well. Outside, the storm raged on, and the constant and powerful storm surges finally overwhelmed and destroyed New Orleans levees causing widespread flooding. The prisoners, who were already agitated from being packed into small cells, began to grow increasingly restless. At this point, many of the guards feared that the prisoners would overrun the prison in a panic, so they left, leaving the prisoners to fend for themselves. With no power, the electronic locking doors failed, sealing the prisoners inside the cells as water continued to rise. We just was left there to die. In an article for Vice News, one guard stated, Prisoners thought we were all planning to leave them to die, locked in there. And I can't say I blame them for thinking that. Like the water was getting higher and higher. It caused a panic among the guys to try to do whatever they can to get out of the place. In the Vice News article, the guard also stated, At some point, the water got high enough where they became angry and started banging on the doors, breaking down the first set of security doors to get out. We real fast went out and locked the second set of security doors and stood outside of them with no weapons. All we had were our voices telling him, don't come out. I started seeing chips of concrete breaking out of the wall in the overhangs. Turns out the inmates inside were using a bed to beat a hole through the cinder block walls. About a day after the storm was over, the prisoners worked together to punch holes in the walls to signal for help. Some made it to the very top of the house of detention, where they tried to get the attention of passing helicopters with this message. Many prisoners gave up on trying to get help from the outside world, so they instead jumped from the holes they made in the walls into the water below. The inmates who were trying to break out of the prison were repeatedly shot at by the authorities. During the chaos, 13 prisoners escaped. They were later apprehended in the ensuing weeks. On August 31st, authorities finally made preparations to rescue the inmates from the prison. There were no official deaths, but inmates claimed to have seen dead bodies floating through the murky water. The New Orleans Sheriff's Department dismisses these claims. So today on Strange Places, follow Max Power, Cinematic Set, r &K all day, and exploring with Josh deep into this now abandoned prison tower. And we will venture deep into this decaying behemoth and uncover its wonders and secrets. Please go to the link right now, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on. It really helps me out a lot, here's the best part. You'll be able to see Strange Place videos the moment they come out. Just go to them right now, take you five seconds. Or I will come to your house, and I will arrest your ass. And now we take you to the abandoned prison skyscraper on Strange Places. I immediately began rummaging through things, trying to locate any interesting artifacts. Looks like a classroom. In prisons, they would allow the inmates to take classes. In fact, they encourage 
uh, inmates to take classes. So I think that's what this was. It looks kind of like a computer lab type setup. There's new computers over here. There's some like desks over here that looks like that look like computers used to be there. This is definitely a computer lab. Another old IBM machine. The classroom's closet was a plethora of interesting finds. Okay, what's in the case? What the hell is this? That's pretty cool. After further research, I found out this device was used to carry out polygraph tests. The machine was a lie detector. Another computer monitor. Before I left the closet, I skimmed over some other items that were left behind. In the hallways surrounding the classroom, there were numerous boxes and equipment that were placed under bags, presumably to protect it from water damage. It looks like there were a lot of attempts to preserve some of the equipment here. So I just saw some exercise equipment down this hall, and I think that's a, like a gym area. Whoa, this is cool. There's a whole bunch of exercise equipment. This is actually a very nice gym. They had every type of machine, treadmills, they had uh, free weights, they had bench press stuff, everything. Oh, this is actually, this is called a Smith machine or something. Yeah. And then this, all this stuff is way too rusty. This is a squat machine. All of the weight equipment is nice equipment, modern equipment, but it's all just been rusted because of the extensive water damage that this area has received. They gave prisoners a punching bag. They don't want prisoners to fight, so they're, but yet they have equipment to help them learn how to fight. It's just kind of it's a little bit odd. You know what? This could actually be for the staff of the prison, now that I'm thinking of it. There are also some trophies uh, scattered about this place, and I'm gonna read what they say. Let's check out some of these trophies. I, uh, you can't even tell what they say. Eastern Seal Classic, Catch the Spirit. I headed back into the dark, deteriorating hallways, trying to see what else I could find amongst the piles of neglected things. Oh, it's a palm pilot. Oh, that's so cool. For those younger viewers, or people who forgot about them, this is like the smartphone of the 2000s. What the hell is this? This is the nerve center of the prison. This is like the headquarters uh, where secretaries would be, where like superior officers and the prison guard ranks would be. Everything, it looks like got kind of executed from up here. There's a lot of stuff that shows that people were being assigned to different things, uh, like schedules, stuff like that. So I think this is like the main office. There's a lot of computers left over here. There are Motorola radio systems or something back here. What is this? All this stuff is Motorola. Oh, so it's like a, um, this, is a, this looks like a PA system. And then like, let's look at some of these machines. Oh, these are all radio. This is all radio stuff. More computers. So guys, I don't know what's up with these discs, but I'm gonna bust out my computer real quick. Let's hope there's something cool on this. Let's get it. Come on. Watch my computer just explode. Audio clubs. Huh. So these are phone calls? Oh, that's cool. All right, I'm going to copy all these files real quick. Okay, I spelled the recordings wrong, but whatever. So guys, they're just records of calls that people made to this office. And what's interesting is those sounded like, like secretaries who have records on file and told people like what was up with the people they wanted to check in on. Um, different violations, stuff like that. Unfortunately, after looking through the files, I didn't find anything that exciting. Each call began with inmate information services, and the callers would ask questions about bonds, release date, etc. Inmate information center, this is Mary, how can I help you? We'll be able to get out of this. Yes. Could you tell me if, uh, hello? Is, uh, yes. Inmate Information Services is Mary. How can I help you? Could you tell me if you have an Eddie? 
What are the charges? I'm it's thinking. automobile windshield window. So it might, he might have had a crack or something in his window. Oh, he was driving. Apparently so. And how much the bond is? Three hundred dollars. Automobile crack in the window. I'm not sure. It says automobile windshield window. Automobile windshield window. Okay, and that's the only thing he got. That's the only thing he has. They might just go ahead and let him go. I never heard that in my life. Hey, Maid Information Service. This is Mary. How can I help you? Hi, Mary. Hi. Um, I was calling to inquire about my daughter. I needed to know if there was a warrant um out for her arrest. You need to find out if there's a warrant out for her arrest. I feel like I was I'm a spy. Hacked into a computer or something. Stole files. Transferred the files. Alright, let's go around this hall. Quite frankly, there's nothing that cool about this office, but it's interesting to see everything was left, and here's the other thing. Everything looks pretty much untouched, too, which means we're one of the first to hit this place. I, I haven't seen this place on YouTube. My crew and I are the first people to actually come in here and explore this on YouTube. Then it was time to head upstairs. On this floor, I found the first set of cells. Unfortunately, the door was locked and there was no access. They're sealed shut. Damn. Unfortunately, this door was locked and there was no access. I wonder how else we can get through there. Why is there a light down there? I don't know if this is active or what. This is really tweaking me out. I could be going into an active place. I have no idea what the hell's going on. But I'm gonna go in anyway to see what's in there. I was not expecting any part of this prison to have power, and since the prison wasn't 100% abandoned, I thought I may have been walking into an active area. Whatever it is, it's running. After seeing the condition of this cell block, I think it's safe to say this was abandoned. So I was a little sketched out when I saw that office with power. I was thinking, oh no, I just walked in the wrong place. But I don't think that's the case. Like people would be in here for, for years, sometimes probably for life. This is a maximum security prison. And this little area would be where you lived forever. makes this place look huge, but it is very, very tiny. We have two blocks here, uh, the stainless steel toilet, and the mirror, which is steel, because they didn't want the inmates, of course, to break the mirror and then use the glass as a weapon or use it to kill themselves. This is one of the cell blocks. This is the place that I tried to get into earlier, but it was sealed. I just bypassed that door, and here I am in the one of the cell blocks. This is very, very cool. I've never seen photos of this place, never seen videos of this place. It looks like very modern cell blocks. The, you can tell the modern ones from the old ones. The old ones had that sort of uh, stereotypical or sort of cliche uh, bars across every one. Those are super old. These are a lot of modern. These are giant metal doors with little, you know, bulletproof uh, pieces of glass in them that could be opened and closed from a main control panel, which is down there. Okay, let's look down here. Let's try to get into that control, uh, the control room thing. Oh, wow. Bars and bulletproof glass. Room, we have a whole bunch of 
controls here. And obviously, this was very, very protected. The guards had ample protection from the inmates. Okay, yeah, this is bulletproof glass. And they had bars on the outside too. But a whole bunch of switches here. Each one of these little groups of controls can control one of these cells. Individual cells were controlled whether they were locked and unlocked from here. It looks like this key, you had to have this key in order to operate this control panel. Same thing with over here. We have another set of controls. Obviously, I think two guards worked here at once. Another control panel uh, covered in pigeon crap now. Here is the other one. Look at the, the bulletproof glass is gone. This is where the visitors, no, the prisoners would be over here. The visitors would be over here. This is the visitor area. Let's go up on the floor. Then I headed up a series of staircases and floors towards the very top of the tower. is a tower it is a skyscraper and the top of the prison was uh, the basketball courts on the roof I also found what was left of a basketball stuck on the roof for at least seven years From there, I briefly headed down two floors to observe what remained on that level. One room on this floor looked like the inside of a Goodwill. Check this out, it's an old 2002 Sugar Bowl t-shirt. There were toys in excellent condition, and also stored there were clothes and sports equipment that were packed into many cardboard boxes. There's someone on the route real quick. This <laughs> guy. Luckily, I returned to the top floor because Josh made an incredible discovery. He's the guy that was trapped here during Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. What? No way! Yeah, so he wrote help for food because that was when everyone was trapped here. Did Josh the one who found help for something food? What's for you? During Hurricane Katrina, obviously, this entire town flooded. People were, they came on the roof and they were asking for helicopters to save them, so they wrote that giant message on the wall here. Oh, it was a terrible throw. There we go. Not bad. This says, do not show to inmates. Debbie does Dallas. Oh. What if there's anything cool in there? Some security footage. That's what I really want to find. It appears as though these were movies and TV shows for the guards to play in a break room. None of them contained the coveted security footage I saw. Oh, cool. Okay, real quick, this is another control room, but it's not covered in pigeon crap. So you can really see all the buttons, dial switches, everything. I went back into the lower levels to see what remained to be explored this is the and documented. Weighing over here. I saved one of the most interesting floors for last. Let's see the medical clinic. It's over here. Boxes of medication, look at that. All these meds were prescribed to a certain person. They just left them in here. Isn't that unbelievable? The 
dental clinic. So this is the dental uh, office here. And they have this very cool chair, this very cool old light. As you can see, everything in this building is just rusting away. This actually looks like a, a laboratory from like a movie or something. I'm surprised there's no like handcuffs or some sort of restraints right on the chair because I feel like inmates could just spring up and do whatever while the, dent uh, while the dentist is working on them. This dentist chair is actually much cooler. Look at this. It has all the little tools left in it. This is the thing that squirts stuff into your mouth. Some of these are, are probably drills, things that the dentist would use to remove cavities. It's all been left in here. This equipment was worth thousands. All medical equipment is very high grade, very expensive stuff. So in here, uh, there's x-ray, there's an x-ray room in here with x-ray film and stuff like that. And there's also some, like some shoes, and I don't know if those are inmate shoes or if those are doctor's shoes, but there's a ton of, uh, a ton of those shoes. It's wrapped up and stored, left behind. Whoa. It's the x-ray machine room. This room is the x-ray room. Obviously there's this x-ray which used to be worth thousands of dollars which they, which they just left here and also there's all, there's all this eye doctor equipment here and one of these things that's really cool better or worse restraint the last set of rooms on my list of things to check out was the solitary confinement block. Look at these really quickly. This is, this is a, uh, a restraining room. This is like solitary confinement for prisoners who were maybe a threat to the rest of the inmates. Maybe they were completely insane or maybe they were going to kill themselves. Jeffrey Epstein. Um, maybe they maybe they put them here as a punishment. But anyway, this is they're isolated in their own little tiny wing in the medical on the medical floor and this sucks they would be in here for a long time and you could peek on them you could peek on them by opening up this window and then you'd slide the food for them in here and this is not a fun life check that out down there too only only window why do they this guy at least this person gets a window to see like what the hell is going on so guys that's all the time we have today thank you so much for watching Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Also check out everyone's social media. The links to everyone's social media is going to be in the description. I'm your host, Max Power. See you next time on Street.